Welcome everyone, welcome. I trust you've been well since my last foray into the wilds of YouTube. Today we have Adaptogens Part 2, American Ginseng, the root, the myth, the legend, live and in the flesh, in the root. One of six roots of rejuvenation to be found in the category of true adaptogens. There are many roots of rejuvenation to be found around the world to be sure but only six so far in the category of true adaptogens. Undoubtedly more will be added as research continues, maybe even today we'll have a new one in the category of true adaptogens. How can American ginseng be used medicinally? What windows of opportunity exist, which are prime spots for American ginseng to work best? And how do we know which product is a real American ginseng versus products which may be adulterated or mislabeled. We are going to get into all of that and more. American ginseng is an adaptogen. What's an adaptogen? The definition is in the video description below. You can check it out. American ginseng is a key herb for elevating human health. There is nothing else like it. And I will be glad to share the basics of its story and its uses with you. The basics. One reason I'm making these videos on adaptogens and other herbs, protocols, uh, health complaints, is because I get a lot of questions about these herbs, fungi, substances. And people say, Sean, tell me the strongest one. Let's just cut to the chase here. What is the most powerful? I'm not sick. I feel great. I, I just want to feel more power. And I say, well, you already are powerful. I, I, I'm on the phone with you right now. I can hear your voice. You're in, you're in great shape. You sound strong and vital. Sean, I just want to feel more power. <laughs> Give me the herbs. So, and you'll see this a lot with people who are in sales of some type when they have to interact up close and personal with the public, maybe six days a week, or maybe uh, physicians, nurses, different occupations where you have to interact with the public a lot. And your looks in sales go a long ways. Uh, and you want to be charismatic and powerful and you just want vitality and power in any human endeavor, it can get very tiring. I, I get it as an introvert. I get it. But all adaptogens are not the same. They're all different. They're all unique and they all have different energetics, abilities. Some are warming, some are cooling, some are drying, some are moistening. So handing out herbs like they're candy or throwing them all together in one formula to be taken all at once can actually be counterproductive. I had a guy contact me years ago. He said, I want the ultimate herbal formula. Price is no object. Just make me the ultimate herbal formula. I'll pay you whatever you want. I had to tell him, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. In six months from now, you could be in a completely different window of opportunity and you will have made this formula for nothing. Had another guy send me an email a couple years ago. He was dealing with a, a parting gift from his ex-girlfriend, an outbreak, the type of gift, which is comprised of a explosive outbreak in the groin region. But he sent me a list of 100 different herbs, spices, oils, everything, and said, can you make me a formula with all of these ingredients in it? And I said, I'm just guessing here, but did you go on Google and enter the name of what you're dealing with? 
and then the word herbs. And he said, yeah. He went on Google, copy and pasted every single herb, spice, rock, whatever, which has been claimed to help with this outbreak. And he wanted me to make a formula out of all of these in the same, in the same container. I said, it doesn't work that way. My phone rings, it's him. He is in tears on the other side of the phone. Can't even speak. Hangs up on me, regains his composure, calls back. Please make this formula. I want rid of this condition. And I had to tell him what you're asking is not feasible. First of all, you need to address the emotional component of what you're going through first. You have a broken heart. You feel betrayed. You feel like you were put in a situation that you don't deserve. After we take care of that, everything else can follow. Like you need hawthorn barrier mimosa with rose petals for a broken heart. That you need something. So for these and many other reasons, I'm putting this information out there. Once each video is made, I can just direct people to the particular video, and then they can decide if an herb or protocol is for them or not. American ginseng, more than any other adaptogen herb, personifies Sean's second law of adaptogens. When you have a choice between a lockpick and a sledgehammer, always go for the lockpick, unless the building is on fire. What do I mean by that? Let's say I have a set of lock picks and here I have a sledgehammer. Okay. So you lose your keys. You cannot get in your house. You call a locksmith and he pulls up in the driveway. He holds a set of lock picks in one hand and a sledgehammer in the other hand. And he says, I, I can use the lock picks. It'll take a lot longer than the sledgehammer. I can just break, break down your door right now with the sledgehammer. Which one do you want me to use? Most people would opt for the lock picks because the sledgehammer will damage your door. But what if someone is trapped inside your house and the building is on fire? Are you going to spend the time using the lock picks or the sledgehammer? Chances are you're going to pick up the sledgehammer and one to three well-placed strikes later, you have blown the door open and there's pieces of lock assemblage, door frame, probably part of the door laying on the floor and you're inside. You've gained entry. So sometimes we need a lock pick and sometimes we need a sledgehammer. When the grains of sand are running out of the hourglass and time is of the essence, sometimes we have to opt for the sledgehammer and some herbs and herbal protocols and non herb protocols out there are sledgehammers. Make no mistake about it. But American ginseng is an herbal lockpick. It is an elegant herbal tool at your disposal. And you can use this with other herbs, other herbal tools in a complementary fashion to get the results that you need. It's always best to keep herb use to the bare minimum in order to get the results you want. Lock picks are the bare minimum. The sledgehammer is maximum force, but you always want to start with the bare minimum. American ginseng, like all true adaptogens, has the advantage of being a multitasking herb. So one herb is working on numerous levels all at once in the person's body. Very handy. 
The name ginseng has a built-in sense of prestige. Even people who know nothing about herbs have heard of American ginseng. American ginseng has been used uh, by the Native Americans in North America for hundreds of years, obviously before the United States was even a country. Uh, one account I have in a book somewhere from the 1800s, somewhere, uh, involves a homesteader's wife treating a Native American's head wound with a poultice made of ginseng leaves and squirrel brains. I'll bet you never saw that on Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, but uh, apparently it worked out quite well and the Native American was quite happy. So ginseng leaves were used medicinally by the Native Americans and the leaves do have medicinal benefit. They contain ginsenicides, just like the berries and the root of American ginseng uh, contain. So uh, I'm not sure if just the leaves are offered in herbal commerce, but then again, I haven't looked, but I'm assuming it's out there. I would imagine somebody out there is offering ginseng leaves just for their ginsenicide content alone. The eclectics in the 1800s and early 1900s, Worcester Beach, Finley Ellingwood, John Scudder, John Lloyd, they looked at American ginseng as a, as a mild stimulant and a, a digestive tonic. They weren't aware of the array of benefits about uh, when using American ginseng like we are today. So it's been used for quite some time Today, we have a better understanding of its unique abilities. There are very few true ginsengs in the world, but there are many herbs claiming to be this ginseng and that ginseng. So what's real? How do you know what you're purchasing is a real ginseng? Ashwagandha, ashwagandha, if you're in India. Also known as winter cherry, withania, somnifera, faucet, is often called Indian ginseng in herbal commerce. Is ashwagandha a true ginseng? It's an incredible herb, but no. Suma, Fathia paniculata, from South America, is often called Brazilian ginseng. Another great herb. Is it a true ginseng? No. Maca root from the Andes Mountains, South America. Lepidium myenii is often called Peruvian ginseng. Now, is this a true ginseng? No, not even close. Thai, black ginger from Thailand. They call it ka. This is marketed as Thai ginseng. Is this a true ginseng? No. Eleuthero, Eleuthero coccus centicosis is still marketed to this day as Siberian ginseng. Is Eleuthero a true ginseng? Well, of all the no's, it's the closest to a yes, but it's still a no. It's actually a cousin of Panax ginseng. Same family, different species. Eleuthero is uh, a Rayleigh I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but I'm standing next to a big map of the world and around the world there are 15 17 different species of ginseng under the genus panax not all of them are in herbal commerce so using my custom american ginseng root pointer here which i made just for this video but i really like it i think i'm going to use this from now on you and I are going to take a trip around the world and we're going to take a look at where some different popular, well-known ginseng grows. So American ginseng grows up in Quebec, Canada, Le Ginseng American, all the way down to Georgia, over to Oklahoma, and then further up north here in Wisconsin, and out west into uh, Minnesota. And the 
uh, appellations here is probably when you think of wild ginseng, not cultivated ginseng, which is very popular in Wisconsin with its abundant ginseng farms, a lot of them. When you think of wild ginseng, people tend to think of the Appalachians. And it is, uh, it does grow here in the heavily shaded, moist, quiet woods in the Appalachians. American ginseng is endangered now, but it's, let's keep it real. It's, people are still going out and harvesting it. It doesn't stop anybody. And then uh, in Ohio, you will find, uh, ginseng as well. There's a bunch, American ginseng, there's a bunch not far from here. I don't tell anybody where it is because then they'll go dig it up when I'm not looking and then it's dead and then it's gone forever and it can't help anybody in the future. So I don't tell anybody where it is, but in whatever state that ginseng grows, it is known as green gold, no doubt, because it goes for around, I would say a thousand dollars a pound would be a good price for the dried root. It can go for that easily, depending on the quality. It could be higher. Now, North American ginseng, this would be Panax quinquefolius, the five-leaved American ginseng. Uh, but in Ohio, where I live, not far from here at all, where I'm standing, we have the three-leaved Panax trifolius. Uh, it, this grows in the upper third of northeastern Ohio. So it's definitely, I know for a fact it's here. So this is called dwarf ginseng. It does not have the classic ginseng root appearance that the other ginsengs have. Dwarf ginseng is more of a globe or a ball for the root. It's not used commercially, really, unless it is ground up and added into other ginseng powders to boost the ginsenicides cheaply, but I, maybe that's happening. Maybe it's not. Now over here in Southern China, we have Panax Nota ginseng, AKA Tianxi ginseng, which deserves quite frankly, a video all to itself, which I'll probably never get around to. Then we have Panax ginseng, which is found in Northern China, scattered up into far eastern Siberia. Uh, if you're lucky, you can find it there. And right along the edge here of Russia, right where it hits the sea here, you don't want your Toyota Prius to break down in this area. Trust me. And here in Korea, north and south, you will find the Mac Daddy, the monster. Somebody better get on the phone and tell them Godzilla is coming. This is the home of Korean red ginseng, which is Panax ginseng heated up and altered. And therefore its chemical profile has been changed. Uh, very warming, very stimulating. And I'm going to talk more about red ginseng uh, later in this video. Very helpful. And if we keep going to the east here, the island nation of Japan, you will find Panax japonicus. Uh, this is used in traditional Japanese medicine, not super well known outside of Japan, not like cordyceps is known outside of uh, China or rhodiola is known outside of the mountainous areas where it grows in Asia. Uh, and down into the left, we have Vietnam. And here you will find the newest species of Panax, Panax vietnamensis. Now this was officially discovered in the late 60s, some say early 70s, but obviously in the, the villages, small villages, the Vietnamese were using it medicinally for who knows how long. But uh, this Panax vietnamensis was given to Vietnamese soldiers during the Vietnam War for strength and endurance. This is officially used in Vietnam, Panax Vietnamensis. Uh, you won't find this one in the old herbal books. It's just too recent of a discovery for it to be included. A friend of mine is in Southeast Asia as we speak, as I'm making this video. And uh, he's gonna be in Vietnam 
in a few days. And he's going to try to obtain some Panax Vietnamensis while he is in Vietnam. And you can buy Panax Vietnamensis online in the United States, but how do you know it is the real Panax Vietnamensis? Because there's a huge amount of uh, adulteration and bait and switching going on in herbal commerce. And there probably is a no returns policy. So now you've shelled out all this money and you get something that isn't the real deal if you're living in the States. So uh, my friend is going to actually go into an herb shop, different herb shops in Vietnam to see if he can find Panax Vietnamensis. He's been sent all of the details so he knows if it's the real McCoy or not. So these are some of the Panax ginsengs, all from the genus Panax. Then you have Jiao Gulan, Latin Gynostema pentaphyllum, which grows in China and Japan. And uh, this is not a true ginseng, but Jiao Gulan does contain ginsenicides, which normally only, only true ginsengs have in their chemical profile. Uh, Jagulan is an important medicinal herb. Uh, a recent discovery as far as herb use, as far as herbs go, especially in this part of the world where they really study herb use. Uh, it has a great energizing effect. I love Jagulan. I think it's great. So does anybody notice a obvious lopsided pattern here? We have Panax quinquefolius American ginseng over here in North America, basically by itself, as far as an outstanding medicinal benefit in a Panax species goes. But over here, we have all of these different ginseng varieties. And you will see this pattern repeated in this part of the world with adaptogen herb, fungi, uh, substances, they pretty much cluster so far in this area of the world. I wonder how American ginseng ended up so far across the world, especially since this area of the world, according to the history books, was covered by a very thick ice cap for a long time. So Panax quinquefolius American ginseng was probably a survivor of others in the Panax ginseng family, uh, or as Panax Vin Diesel would say, family, which were wiped out in this area of the world over time. So, but over here, one of the reasons you will find so many of these amazing herbs is because of one, mainly one specific reason. Groups of people for generations went out of their way to look for these types of herbs, fungi, mushrooms, uh, substances, rocks, anything, animal parts, anything with the qualities that you will find in adaptogens and other possible adaptogens, your tonic herbs, other substances like deer placenta, black ant, uh, deer antler, velvet. They were studying and deliberately looking for life-extending, longevity, tonic products. They knew what they wanted and they set out to find them. Now, over here in America, the medical model was very different. Uh, now we call it the puke, purge, and bleed model. Puke, purge, and bleed is not the title of the Marquis de Sade's autobiography, no. This was a practiced medical model in America in the 17th, 18th, far into the 19th century to be sure. And Puke, Purge, and Bleed is the title of a chapter in a book I own. It's a collection of accounts. Uh, if I can find it, I'll stick it at the end of the video, a picture of it. But it is a collection of the accounts of the herbal and medical procedures in the 1800s, the country doctor, the traveling physician in Ohio and other states. And the book is titled The Midwest Pioneer, His Ills, Cures, and Doctors. It was printed in 1945. I was able to get a first edition for $10. And I, there's probably, I don't think it's really a super valuable book. There's a lot of copies out there cheap, but 
you will get down on your knees and thank God for the medical and herbal knowledge we have today after reading this book. Absolutely fascinating. So the puke, purge, and bleed model was give them herbs till they puke, give them herbs until they blow their colon out, or liberate them of a pint of their blood. This was the three-step medical model in this area of the world. Okay, Far removed from the more subtle search for the energetics that they wanted in a human being that they would get from a botanical or an animal parts, an ant, whatever, in India, uh, Japan, China, and uh, up into Russia with nomadic tribes. So that's one reason why so many herbs uh, that you'll see, so many famous tonic herbs are clustered in this area of the world. People went out of their way to look for plants or whatever it took to give them the results they were looking for. <clears throat> so when buying American ginseng, you have to make sure that what you're buying is really American ginseng. There is adulteration in the herbal marketplace. There has been for thousands of years. Anytime there's going to be a profit, you're going to find corruption. That's just human nature. So this is why I do not buy powders. I buy the whole roots or I don't buy it. When I hold this, I can, uh, I can look at the root. I can see it in its relatively, it's a relatively whole form. American ginseng has a characteristic smell. If you chew the root, it is sweet with a slightly bitter aftertaste. I can slice this up, put it under a microscope and examine the cell structure. So I know this is ginseng. You cannot do that with powder. The powder requires more elaborate testing and powder is also open to adulteration. So you either need elaborate testing or you gotta send it off to Eurofins or a lab for testing. If you're gonna buy American ginseng for yourself, or certainly if you're going to use it to help elevate a person's health, which I'm definitely going to get into uh, in just a few minutes, you wanna make sure you're getting woods grown. Woods grown ginseng is planted on purpose in the forest, in its native habitat, uh, in different places in North America. And it's allowed to flourish on its own or not flourish. Ideally, no pesticides or herbicides are used. It's the closest plant that you can get to wild American ginseng. True woods grown American ginseng, dried, will go for around 1000 1200 bucks a pound or more, depending on the quality. And uh, if you want to get a, a tincture of it, depends on the dilution ratio. It could be between one to two and one to four or even higher. It's not cheap. So depending on how concentrated it is, it can be as high as $50 an ounce for high quality American ginseng tincture, probably more. And if you fit the signature profile of a person who could truly benefit from American ginseng, it is worth every penny. <clears throat> American ginseng is an endangered species similar to lady slipper, true unicorn root, false unicorn root, uh, Virginia snake root, echinacea, golden seal, Venus flytrap. <laughs> so I urge you to buy the woods grown American ginseng. American, the use of American ginseng in China is absolutely huge. Tens of thousands of tons of American ginseng has been exported from North America to China, <clears throat> pardon me, to China since records began. Uh, they didn't really start keeping records until the early 1820s. So there was quite a bit even before they started keeping records. So we've been exporting uh, for quite some time over to China. They are absolutely in love with American ginseng in China, from Beijing to 
Hainan Island and every other place I went to, every herb shop that I went into, and I'll I'll put some of my pictures up uh, here, or uh, pictures I took in herb shops. Every herb shop always had the same three items in stock without fail. Chrysanthemum, cordyceps, and American ginseng. Every time. They may have had other herbs, and those herbs uh, rotated or changed, depending on the location. Uh, in Hainan Island, I was surprised to see a Korean red ginseng for sale. Uh, Chinese and Koreans, they don't really get along all that well, so I was surprised to see it. But they all had chrysanthemum, cordyceps, and American ginseng. Even Walmarts uh, had those three items. Herb use is looked at entirely differently there compared to North America. And you will see American ginseng paired up with or uh, sold in kits with dendrobium, which is an orchid, uh, it's called dendrobium, or uh, Ophiopagon, or if you're British, it's Ophiopagon, yeah, it's quite, which is a tuber. You will see these paired up in very ornate wooden boxes, uh, lacquered boxes, sanded, nice grained wood, and with a little lock on the front. And this is where we get into the medicinal nuts and bolts of American ginseng. All three of these herbs have distinct nourishing and moistening qualities, which are needed when a person is, uh, you'll have a dry mouth, dry skin. Uh, a person is getting over a long illness and they're weak, tired, dried out. They've lost a lot of fluids. American ginseng comes to the rescue here. It is a sweet, nourishing, moistening herb, just like the dendrobium, uh, Codonopsis, Pilosula is uh, like this as well, and then Ophiopagon, Japonicus. So American ginseng generates fluids in the body. It's also slightly warming, and American ginseng is paired up with these other herbs to provide a more moistening or yin condition in the body. Yin would be the the Chinese term in traditional Chinese medicine. So to provide a cool cooling or yin or moistening effect, the dendrobium, the ophiopagon are taken with the American ginseng and you'll see soups with all three of these ingredients uh, tossed in there. Uh, they'll also throw in a little goji berry and some other ingredients and this is for the moistening effect. So you have this nourishing, nutritive, moistening tour de force running through the body with all three of these moistening herbs. And at the same time, the chi is built up. In America, we would say the person's core energy is built up. They're getting their strength back. They're becoming more vital, alert, energetic. And you will have these respiratory illnesses which just sweep through large amounts of people in these metropolitan areas. And out in the country as well. And these can dry out the respiratory systems. <clears throat> this is in China. And this can dry out the respiratory systems of those who, some of those who get sick. And when I was in China, the entire eastern half of the country was sick. Everybody was coughing. Taxi drivers, people in the airports, people sitting behind me on plane, two-hour trip, hacking their lungs out. Uh, shops. I was in an herb shop in Beijing and all these tourists were in there looking for help from this vicious flu wave, which was sweeping through China at the time. I remember these tourists, just a young guy and his girlfriend from Great Britain, man, they, they were in bad shape and they're trying to communicate with the workers in the herb shop <laughs> looking for help. There's a language barrier, very frustrating. And walking down the street, you could hear dry coughing, dry hacking sounds. Everybody was sick. And that was a real life example on a nationwide scale of uh, the usefulness of these yin generating, fluid generating, moistening, cooling, nourishing herbs, which are a big, important part of their life. Uh, they're thrown into soups, like I say, 
Or you can make a tea out of American ginseng and mix in the dendrobium, the ophiopagon, the codenopsis if it's appropriate. And this is to restore the lost fluids because the last situation you want when dealing with a respiratory illness is a hot, dry tissue state. The lungs are, what, 80% water? There's a reason for that. You don't want to let them dry out. You don't want to let the respiratory system dry out. Uh, you could use pleurisy root, butterfly weed for the lungs as well, <clears throat> which is in North America. So dryness is not only limited to the respiratory system. A person can have dry skin, dry eyes, dry joints, vaginal dryness, dry everything. American ginseng is fantastic for this situation. I've suggested it many times for Sjogren's syndrome, uh, which ties back to a pathogen and adrenal dysfunction where low affinity antibodies attack healthy tissue. So American ginseng will help here with its moistening action on the entire body. Sjogren's is it is not pleasant. It does a number on your skin, your organs, your joints, your teeth, because you can't produce saliva to keep a uh, alkaline pH. And then it becomes acidic, bacteria grow. You can't flush the bacteria out. And it affects it. But Sjogren's affects everything. You'll have brain fog from Sjogren's. So American ginseng would really be helpful here. Solomon seal would be helpful here as well with its moistening, nutritive, nourishing qualities. <clears throat> American ginseng is superb for a person who has gone through a long illness, a long battle, a long drawn out battle, and come out the other side depleted of energy. Let's say they had uh, what's the long pneumonia, which has a grief element to it, and Hawthorne Crataegus would be very useful here, where you have anxiety, grief, heaviness of heart. Uh, another long drawn out illness would be tuberculosis, the big C, the biggest, seest of them all. So, this person has lost a lot of weight, they have a dry cough. The person has overcome the illness, but at the expense of their core energy and their vitality. They're like a battery, which has been used to power an, an extremely bright light. And now that battery is depleted and needs recharged. This intense period of the body trying to survive this long, drawn out illness, this battle, it drains the person's energy and it can lead to severe depression. American ginseng helps bring a person's appetite back after one of these long drawn out battles. One reason being is that there is a slight bitter aftertaste to the root and bitters stimulate digestion and appetite. So you can have someone who's very frail. They can't eat anything. Even if they can keep food down. They cannot extract nutrients from the food because it takes energy for the digestion process and they don't have it. The HPA axis, our old friend, the HPA axis, hypothalamic pituitary, adrenal axis is exhausted. This ties into the adrenals. That's shot. They don't have the energy to digest their food and American ginseng, like all adaptogens, works on the HPA axis and helps a person with their digestion so they can actually have a chance of extracting nutrients from their food for a change. It may have been years that they have not been able to get nutrients from their food. Irish moss prepared as a consumable liquid has been used many times to get a person through this period of wasting away because you have this this uh, salty, mineral-rich medium with traces of iodine. It's moistening, like American ginseng is to the tissues. And this would help the kidneys rejuvenate 
and keep the person alive long enough to get their appetite back. Where again, American ginseng would come into play again, acting as a, uh, called a stomachic, but appetite builder. So you can get nutrients from your food again. So we spend nine months in this aquatic ocean-like medium. And then we are thrust out into the world and then it's reversed. We're walking around with the ocean inside of us. And when we are ill, if it's appropriate, the ocean comes back to save us in the form of Irish moss, which is, uh, well, you can kind of think of uh, Irish moss as the portable essence of the ocean that you can consume uh, in some respects. But again, you have this moistening, strengthening substance coming to the rescue like American ginseng does. So if it's appropriate, you could use these two together, although I would think uh, the Irish moss may be used first just to get something in the person for the American ginseng to help them <laughs> digest. Uh, but I don't think there would be a very big gap between the use of two of those. American ginseng is very useful for a person with late stage uh, HIV, AIDS, late stage tuberculosis, late stage, the big C. Uh, it's times like this when Kaposi's sarcoma will rear its ugly head. When the immune system is greatly weakened, American ginseng, which fortifies and builds up the HPA axis, will be of great value here. American ginseng is an immune amphoteric. Sean, what does that mean? <laughs> Amphoterics strengthen tissues of specific organs or a specific system in the body. So a nervous system amphoteric would be uh, St. John's wort or fresh milky oats. Hawthorn berry would be an amphoteric for the heart and the cardiovascular system. Immune amphoterics, immune system amphoterics would be uh, ashwagandha, reishi mushroom, as well as American ginseng, uh, Panax ginseng as well, cordyceps, holy basil, eleuthero, schizandra. Uh, these are all immune amphoterics, but <laughs> they all also have different qualities, which make them ideal or not ideal for different people. And that will change in the same person's life and it can change within a matter of weeks or months. <clears throat> American ginseng helps with hyperimmune response or hypoimmune response. It has a normalizing, balancing effect, which you would expect from a true adaptogen, a hallmark of an adaptogen. American ginseng helps with depression, which is associated with exhaustion. <clears throat> there are different types of depression, over a dozen, probably closer to 15, and therefore you will have different types of herbs and herbal combinations, which you can use for each individual person, because you look at the person and not the label that somebody slapped on them. If by the time they find you, they've probably been through the ringer and had many different labels applied to them. So we have to look at the person to get to the true root cause. So anytime you go to make a formula for depression, if the depression is associated with exhaustion, and this can also be chronic stress, which has burned the person out. And you'll see signs of HPA axis depletion when this network is burned out, you'll have the dark raccoon eyes uh, they stick their tongue out, the tip of the tongue shakes like a leaf in the wind. American ginseng uh, would be appropriate here, also appropriate for fibromyalgia. American ginseng uh, will help you get the restful, healing sleep, so you can activate the glymphatic system repeatedly, night after night, which is something we all need, and also something a lot of people haven't had for years on end. The addition of an appropriate adaptogen like American ginseng 
into an herbal formula will really increase the effectiveness for a person who, by this point in their life, they desperately need help. They need a break. They're at their wit's end. We've got to help these people. <laughs> Someone has to help them. This can destroy families. It can break relationships apart. So the more people that know about this information, the better. It's, you know, this information isn't secret, but, you know, I'm just putting it together like a lot of other people have so we can help people. A few years ago at a seminar down in Florida, I was talking with a guy and he says, you're Sean, right? One with nature, that guy. I said, yeah, and we had a mutual friend and he and I had spoken on the phone before, but we had never met in person. And he said, I need help. I'm tired all the time. So he calls me later, gives me his story, and I start asking questions because I'm trying to trace these symptoms back to their original root cause. <clears throat> because when you do this, you'll eventually come to a point where something in their life occurred which changed their life significantly. Life was never the same after this event. And I found it. And I said, you're mineral depleted. You're dealing with a pathogen and your adrenals. Where's my adrenal? Your adrenals need a deep, nourishing nutrition. They need the building blocks. And they're not getting it. And this would be an appropriate use for ginseng right now. For you. I actually suggested the monster, red ginseng, for him. So I gave him the name of a doctor, and life went on. I didn't hear from him. And then two months later, my phone rings, and it was him. He said, I want to thank you. This information, this stuff changed my life. I talked to that doctor, and he came to the same conclusions you did. I didn't want to tell you this earlier, but my marriage was on the rocks. My wife was going to leave me. If my kids wanted to go outside and play, I wouldn't even last five minutes. I'd have to go back into bed and I'd stay there for 12 to 18 hours. He couldn't be a father to his children. And he said, I am doing so much better now. American ginseng helped my son, my son, tremendously. He had exhaustion from uh, playing and overtraining in sports in school. Um, could have used Eleuthero, but American, because of his age, um, you, young, but American ginseng fit the profile. I added a few other herbs. <laughs> he bounced back incredibly well. You look at him now, you'd never believe he ever needed anything, any kind of help. So it doesn't take a lot of American ginseng in a formula to make a difference. It can only be 10, 15% in a formula, probably be pushing it maybe, uh, and it can still be quite effective. So if you have a formula and only 10 or 15% is dedicated to American ginseng, you have a lot of room left for other nutritive, nourishing, fortifying herbs to be included in that formula. <clears throat> American ginseng is good for adrenal mental overdrive. This is where the person's mind is like a handful of feathers cast to the wind. They blow this way, they blow that way. They can't concentrate because it takes energy to concentrate and they don't have it. Their memory will go on the fritz because they don't have the energy to remember. They're that depleted. You'll see people tossing and turning all night during sleep. It takes energy to sleep, and this person doesn't have it. So they just end up tossing and turning all night, never completing those three to five cycles, complete cycles of sleep, the sleep pattern, which you need to repair, replenish, and clean the brain out with the glymphatic system. So they're stressed out. American ginseng as a nourishing herb gives chi, energy, to a burned out body. 
enough energy for real sleep to be enjoyed, maybe for the first time in years in this person's life. So the American ginseng powers this exhausted body long enough for the person to get restful healing sleep and begin to recover. American ginseng is like a set of herbal jumper cables, jump-starting the body until it can run by itself. Uh, talk about this book. Sometimes when you help somebody through a long, drawn-out illness uh, and navigate them back to health, it's like a war. And there are similarities between navigating a person back to health and warfare. I don't know if any of you have ever seen this book. It's called Sun Tzu's Art of War and Healthcare. I was in a bookstore in Beijing. I saw this book. I saw a lot of books. Uh, books are my kryptonite. So I came home with a bunch of books from China. My suitcase wouldn't close. But this book, this book makes some good points. Uh, some chapters are uh, anger equals defeat, food versus medicine. Uh, it talks about excess. It talks about mental calm. Uh, and then uh, you have a chapter on <laughs> excessive maintenance. <laughs> Basically, just, you know, sometimes you just leave the, leave the body alone. Just more is not always better. So I just thought somebody out there would benefit from reading this, or maybe you can read it and get a couple points of inspiration and be able to help someone else. I don't know. But you can get this on Amazon. Sun Tzu's Art of War and Healthcare. <clears throat> so, up to this point, American ginseng seems pretty unstoppable and miraculous, but there is a time when you need to forego the use of American ginseng. American ginseng is not for people who are so cold, so depleted, so hollowed out that they are basically husks of their former selves. This is extreme depletion. The person spends 23 hours a day in bed. They get up to go to the bathroom and they feel like they just completed the Ironman triathlon. No energy left. Maybe, if they're lucky, three times a week they'll have enough energy to shower and then crawl back to bed. Maybe. This is extreme depletion, or as I call it, adrenal Armageddon. Red ginseng is called for here. <clears throat> uh, American ginseng doesn't have the, the heating, warming, stimulating power needed in this extreme case. That's red ginseng. And uh, I'll cover this more in my red ginseng video, where I'll go a little bit more into depth with that. Type A personalities can benefit from American ginseng when they finally blow up from overwork and exhaustion. These are the personality types where you're driving down the road, somebody passes you, you both end up at the same red light. It light turns green, they take off as fast as they can, you both end up at the same red light. The light turns green, they take off as fast as they can, you're both at the, at the very next red light. They don't get it. They don't even understand they're doing it. They're always running hot. This overachieving energy, no cooling down period, and they can destroy their health because they do not have enough balance. The precious yin in their physical makeup is not there to create balance. There's no homeostasis. There's never a cooling off period. It's always go, go, Go. They run hot 24-7. If they were a car, if they were a car, they would be a Ford, 1969 Ford Mustang, 428 Super Cobra Jet, uh, Mach 1, driving 170 miles an hour down the highway of life on bald tires, the tank filled with 100 plus octane gasoline, and those lane markers on the highway, the stripes, they would view those as quaint but completely ignorable suggestions. <laughs> Type A personalities are fun to hang out with, and it's even more fun when you get into your car 
at the end of the night and drive away from them quickly. But this yang heat needs to be balanced out by a moistening herb. This is a good time to use American ginseng. Their nervous system is probably going to blow out just like the engine in that Mustang. I've, I've seen this in person and not just once. <clears throat> it's not pretty. Type A's can be very energetic, very optimistic, very positive. So they'll burn their central nervous system to the max because they don't, they're like, oh, I'm going to get better. Everything's going to be fine. I'm going to get better. And they just sink lower and lower. So adding in fresh milky oats as a nervous system amphoteric in this situation would be called for here. Oat straw would be another nutritive suggestion for this person. American ginseng lowers blood sugar levels, lowers cortisol levels. This is good for treating uh, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome. What's metabolic syndrome, Sean? Uh, it is when you have a waistline this big, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, the whole enchilada, and the rest of the menu as well your risk of coronary heart disease, diabetes, stroke, sky high. Insulin resistance syndrome. I would guess conservatively 50, 55% of Americans have metabolic syndrome. This is avoided by lifestyle changes. Never depend, never depend on any herb when you can simply change your lifestyle. If you use herbs as a crutch, when you drink everything in this bottle, you're back to square one because you didn't change your lifestyle. So change your lifestyle and you don't need the American ginseng. Uh, you don't need herbs <clears throat> in that capacity. So cortisol levels, this is huge. This is what's killing your circadian rhythm right now. Circadian rhythm. I'm not talking about the rock group from Long Island. Yes, they're real. I'm talking about the body's internal clock. Normal circadian rhythm is vital to good health, to the endocrine system. Adaptogens have been shown to help with this out of whack internal clock. Adaptogens can help with seasonal affective disorder syndrome. SADS, which is a disruption of the circadian cycle. So the way we live elevates our stress levels. We follow a cycle and nighttime is the yin time of day. It is quiet, calm, cooling. The temperature of the body drops as we sleep and our thoughts drift off and off to sleep we go. The daytime is yang. The sun is shining. It burns the dew off of the grass. Animals are active. People are active. Brains, our brains are active. We are accomplishing tasks. <clears throat> but after the sun goes down, we should be shutting down. But if we are prompting cortisol levels to be continually produced and jacked up, watching TV right up to the time we go to bed, or we're on the computer right up until bedtime, or worse, we're actually in bed with our smartphone, doom scrolling, freaking ourselves out. And if you're, uh, if you're not sleeping on grounded sheets, you might wanna take a look at that. So all of this is an abnormal elevation of yang. Cortisol raised, stressing ourselves during what should be a yin or cooling off period, winding down period of the day. The brain is too active. The body and mind needs to relax. So when you're doom scrolling on your phone while you're in bed, you can't relax. And then your sleep is all thrown out of whack and you don't get those complete cycles of sleep, the three to five cycles of sleep. It's all screwed up. The yin part of the day, again, <clears throat> this is after sunset. 
the darkness, the coolness, the quiet. Ideally, not always possible, especially when you've got kids running around. <laughs> it's just not. Or if you are working a swing shift, which is disastrous to body chemistry. But at least now you know the difference. So a lot of this comes back to, at, at the end of the day, it, it comes back to kidney energy. It's depletion and destruction through fear, mostly. Uh, fear, stress, time constraints. It's used against you every day of your life. Fear sells in many ways. Uh, a lot of people call Earth Fear University. I have to agree with that. Fear is used to deplete you and make you feel hopeless. So American ginseng can help here too. It is a soothing, nerving. It is soothing and calming to the nervous system. Just like fresh milky oats, damiana, lemon balm, passion flower, St. John's wort, and many others. <clears throat> uh, Stakies, wood betony. So you could combine American ginseng with these different other nervine herbs if it's appropriate. You could use it for deficiency insomnia. And again, deficiency insomnia is when a person doesn't have the energy to, to sleep. They are so depleted they cannot sleep. They enter into a period of insomnia and their health continues to circle the drain. So you can break this pattern with American ginseng and fresh milky oats. You could add in, which is just pure nourishment for the nervous system, hawthorn, excellent nervine, uh, chamomile, a great nervine, lemon balm, another great nervine. But again, you want to tailor these to the person and never use any herb without first checking for contraindications. <clears throat> so don't be surprised if American ginseng works immediately for getting a good night of deep healing sleep. It happens all the time. If it does not work immediately, well, don't give up. Hang in there. Uh, the internet has made a vast number of people accustomed to instant gratification and it begins to spoil us. So don't let this sense of instant gratification, which is the norm, on the internet. I mean, I can order something right now and it'll be here tomorrow morning. That's awesome. But our health doesn't work that way. It takes time. So can you use American ginseng and get immediate benefit? Absolutely. But American ginseng grows slowly. And for many people, it works slowly. So I ask you, do you want <laughs> the lockpick or the sledgehammer? So, our highlights in this video would be American ginseng's use as a nervine tonic, good for nervous exhaustion due to the overwork or long drawn out illnesses. It helps with nervousness due to physical exhaustion. And you can start just by chewing the root. It'll work just by chewing on the root four or five times a day. Uh, or you can go all the way up to using a tincture or a formula with American ginseng in it. It is a remarkable herb and we will discover more uses as time goes on without a doubt. Well, <clears throat> at the beginning I said this was just going to cover the basics and if I keep going, we're going to leave the basics far behind. Uh, there's a lot of chemistry with the HPA axis and the, adre the adrenals and hormones and how it <clears throat> help, how it helps you chemically uh, within the body. So I think this is a good place to stop and let's use this information to help ourselves and others, okay? My name is Sean. I am one with nature and I will see you in the next video. And this is comes make me nervous.